Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Erudispace. I am Dr. Samadarshan Mahanti, and today we will discuss about the four-stroke spark ignition engine. Before discussing this, I would like to tell you that the normal classes of engineering thermodynamics will continue. So many of my students have been requesting me to take some classes related to the four-stroke and two-stroke cycle IC engine. In fact, I will take some lectures of internal combustion engine apart from the two-stroke and four-stroke cycle engine which forms the most important part of internal combustion engine subject. And I sincerely believe that by watching this video, your concept about the four-stroke SI engine would be crystal clear. Whether you are an engineer or a non-engineer or whether you are pursuing engineering or not pursuing engineering. So today what we will discuss, first I will give you a brief introduction. Then we will discuss about the different engine components. Then I will give you some idea about the engine nomenclature. Then how the four-stroke cycle engine actually works. And then what are the advantages of four-stroke SI engine in comparison with the two-stroke SI engine. So first, in the introduction, why we call it a four-stroke SI engine? We call it a four-stroke engine, SI engine because it is completed in four strokes or two revolutions of the crankshaft. We call it SI engine because it is using a spark lock to ignite the air fuel mixture and the electric spark given by the spark lock burns the air fuel mixture. That's why it is a spark ignition engine. We call it an internal combustion engine because the combustion of the air fuel mixture takes place inside the engine cylinder. Unlike the steam engines which are known as external combustion engines because in case of your steam engines the combustion of fuel takes place outside the engine cylinder. Then we will discuss about the different components. Some of the components have been shown in the figure and some have not been shown. But I would give you detailed information about the functioning of each component. You do have a cylinder and inside the engine cylinder the piston actually reciprocates between two dead centers. In the engine nomenclature, I will tell you what is the significance of dead centers and what are the dead centers. Then we do have two valves, inlet valve and exhaust valve. Through the inlet valve, the air fuel mixture is drawn into the engine cylinder and through the exhaust valve, the burnt air fuel mixture is adjusted to the atmosphere. Then you have a connecting rod. The connecting rod actually connects the piston with the crankshaft and the connecting rod is actually connected to the piston by means of a piston pin or guardian pin. The piston pin and guardian pin has not been shown in this figure but you should understand that the piston pin or guardian pin actually connects the piston with that of the connecting rod. Then you have piston rings. Piston rings are provided to prevent the leakage of the gas from the cylinder to the crankcase. Then you have the crankshaft shown here and then you have a crankcase. Crankcase actually provides housing to the crankshaft and there are components like flywheel, carburetor which have not been shown. The function of a flywheel is that it works as an energy accumulator. It stores the energy developed during the power stroke and supplies the same during the idle strokes. Subsequently, I will tell you what is power stroke and what are idle strokes. Carburetor has not been shown in the figure. What is the function of a carburetor? The function of a carburetor is that it prepares the air fuel mixture and supplies the same 
to the engine through the inlet valve and the ratio of air fuel varies depending upon the condition that means when you are starting the engine when you are running and when you are running the engine with lesser load definitely the ratio will vary so that is something that we will not discuss today but you should remember that the function of a carburetor is to prepare the air fuel mixture to be used inside the engine cylinder then you have a spark plug which actually gives an electric spark and this actually helps in the combustion process so after discussing the components we will discuss the engine nomenclature i have taken the same diagram so that you can understand first one is bore bore is actually the inside diameter of the cylinder the stroke is actually the distance traversed in moving from one dead center to another dead center and this is a case of a vertical engine and in case of your vertical engine the dead centers are top dead center and bottom dead center top dead center is abbreviated as tdc and the bottom dead center is abbreviated as bdc in case of horizontal engines the dead centers are known as your inner dead center and your outer dead center there is always a gap between the tdc and the cylinder head this gap is what we call your clearance volume whatever may be the measures you take clearance volume can never be reduced to zero because the valves are to be operated then you have the swept volume swept volume is the volume swept by the piston when it moves from one dead center to another in this case it is the volume swept in moving from tdc to bdc or vice versa the next one is compression ratio compression ratio is actually the ratio between the total cylinder volume to the clearance volume then the last one is your mean effective pressure mean effective pressure is a theoretical parameter to measure the performance of the internal combustion engine the pressure never remains constant during the cycle but it gives you some idea about the performance of the engine and mean effective pressure is calculated by dividing the total work done by the volumetric displacement now we will come to the functioning of a four stroke cycle engine the four stroke cycle engine actually consists of four strokes these strokes are known as suction stroke compression stroke expansion stroke and exhaust stroke so let us discuss these strokes one by one in the suction stroke the piston will be initially at the top dead center position or tdc position as the piston moves from tdc to bdc a partial vacuum is created and during the suction stroke the inlet valve is in open position and due to volumetric increase the air fuel mixture is drawn into the engine cylinder and this process continues till the piston reaches the bottom dead center position or bdc position and during the suction stroke the exhaust valve or the outlet valve is in closed position next one is your compression stroke and during compression stroke both the inlet as well as the outlet or exhaust valve are in closed position and the piston moves from bdc to tdc thereby compressing the air fuel mixture drawn into the engine cylinder during the previous stroke to the clearance volume and due to this there is significant increase in its pressure and temperature and just before the compression process is over the spark plug gives an electric spark 
due to compression itself the pressure and temperature is raised and when it comes in contact with the spark the combustion of the air fuel mixture takes place and due to combustion huge amount of thermal and pressure energy is developed this one represents your expansion stroke i have already told you that due to combustion of the air fuel mixture huge amount of pressure and thermal energy is developed as a result it forces the piston to move from tdc to bdc and during the expansion stroke also both the inlet as well as the exhaust valves are in closed position and the process continues till piston reaches the bottom dead center or bdc position this is also known as your power stroke or working stroke because this is the only stroke which contributes towards the power development we do have a flywheel which works as an energy accumulator it stores the energy developed during the expansion or power stroke and supplies the same during idle stroke the last one is your exhaust stroke and in exhaust stroke the piston again moves from bdc to tdc and during the exhaust stroke the inlet or the suction valve is in closed position but the exhaust valve is in open position as a result as the piston moves from bdc to tdc the burnt air fuel mixtures which are not capable to produce any more power are adjusted to the surrounding through this adjust valve now one thing i have told you that during the compression stroke and the expansion stroke both the inlet and exhaust valves are in closed position but we need to remember that valves remain open for some person of the compression as well as the expansion stroke but that is something that we will not discuss for a beginner it is prudent to remember that valves remain completely closed during the compression and expansion stroke once we discuss the valve timing diagram i'll give you the reason why the valves do remain in open position for some person of compression and expansion stroke another thing that i would like to tell you that i have given you detail idea about the suction compression expansion and exhaust stroke but you need to remember that only the third stroke is contributing towards power development so how the reciprocation is taking place for that you need to supply power from some supplementary source it may be a kick starter it may be a self starter which actually facilitates the reciprocation of the piston inside the engine cylinder once the power is developed then it is self sufficient now this actually shows an operating four stroke engine and you can see the different components you can see the spark plug this actually gives the spark then you have inlet valve and exhaust valve you do have a cylinder and inside the cylinder the piston is reciprocating you have a connecting rod which connects the piston with that of crankshaft this is is actually your piston pin or your gudgeon pin which is providing connection between the piston and the connecting rod you can see the crank here and this is the crank case which is actually housing the crank shaft now we'll discuss about some of the major advantages of the four stroke si engine in comparison with the two stroke si engine it provides more fuel efficiency why it provides more fuel efficiency because there is a separate stroke for exhaust as a result 
comparatively more utilization of fuel is taking place in case of four stroke engine probability of fuel leaving the system without being burnt is very less so it gives higher fuel efficiency compared to two stroke engine it gives less pollution why it gives less pollution because in two stroke engines the lubricants are mixed with the fuel when it comes to your four stroke engine lubricants are never mixed with fuels so the probability of pollution is less and already i have told you that the fuel efficiency is higher so as the combustion of fuel takes place and a little person of the fuel lives without being burnt so pollution is also less due to that reason they are more durable compared to the two stroke cycle engines because the two stroke cycle engines usually run at very high rpm so four stroke cycle engines are more durable because they run at lower rpm then we'll discuss about the disadvantages of four stroke engine in comparison with the two stroke cycle engine they are complicated in design already i have told you that we do have valve arrangements whereas in case of your two stroke cycle engine you have port arrangement in port arrangements the entry of the fuel air mixture into the system or the removal of the burnt air fuel mixture is due to the covering or uncovering of the ports by the piston you do not have valve arrangements in case of your two stroke cycle engines and apart from that the valves which are present in four stroke engines are to be operated by an actuating mechanism so definitely this makes the four stroke engine more complicated compared to two stroke engine in case of your four stroke engine you get one power stroke in four strokes or two revolution of the crankshaft whereas in case of your two stroke engine you get one power stroke in two strokes or single revolution of the crankshaft so for that reason it is definitely less powerful compared to the two stroke engine four stroke engines are expensive because you do have valve arrangements you have valve actuating arrangements all these things do make four stroke engines more expensive compared to the two stroke engines and i sincerely believe that after watching this video your concept about four stroke si engine would be crystal clear thank you very much for watching this video please do like and comment on today's lecture please don't forget to subscribe to my channel